Hi. My name is John Hassan, and as you can may or may not tell, I cannot figure out how to get these to work right. It's one of the benefits of running Windows on a Mac. So I'm going to be facing this way some of the time during the presentation, but I'll, uh, if, it, if you have your hand raised and I can't see you, make some noise. I'll turn around. My name is John. I've been doing uh, PPC marketing uh, for almost three, yeah, three years now. I started out as a programmer, uh, you know, the geeky ones, you know, and we're doing databases, websites, desktop applications, all that stuff. I've been a programmer for 15 plus years, and then I realized I can make a heck of a lot more money uh, through internet marketing. And I gravitated towards pay-per-click because of, there was a lot of things in there that I, uh, as a programmer, I could automate very easily. Well, actually, some of them are kind of hard. Um, and so the goal today is to go over an example of and to give you ideas on ways that you can access tools that are completely free. None of this stuff I'm going to talk about costs you a dime, except for time. None of the, there's, a, there's tools that are put out and by Microsoft and, and even other places, but we're, kind of, we're, we're going to focus on the Microsoft stuff because it's, a, it's easier to get into the very first time. Can we uh, figure out how to do this? OK. Whenever you want to automate something, there's a couple of things that, that, that you really need to do. Usually, as far as, with, as it relates to affiliate marketing, you're going to somebody's website and you're getting some sort of information off of it. And then you're taking that information, storing it on your local computer, your local database, and then you want to put that somewhere else. It's a, the, and that's, that's pretty much it. Once you figure out ways to accomplish those three things, you can automate anything. The first step we're going to talk about, um, there, and there's a couple of different ways to do each and every one. There are, there's something called the IE DOM, Internet, Internet Explorer Document Object Model. And we're going to get really technical about halfway through this. And so if you have questions, please ask, and I'll do my best to explain anything. Uh, what the Internet Explorer Document Object Model is, is inside Internet Explorer, it's the, the, the web browser, there's ways that you can programmatically access the uh, input fields, the form fields, the buttons, the images, all that. After you load that onto your computer, you can access that and change that in any way you want. It's, you, you can also do the, the same thing with, th with like things like Grease Monkey and Firefox and so on, but I, I'm, we don't really have time to go over all the different ways you can do this because there are a lot. Uh, the other thing that we're going to go over is something called the web request. It's a, a tool in Microsoft's .NET, which is uh, their version of Java, more or less. But we, we, we won't get into code wars right here. And you can use that to um, perform the same types of interactions that, that, that you can using the Internet Explorer document, the IE DOM manipulation, except that you, you don't have to worry about a user interface, or you don't have to worry about actually seeing the browser. With the first one, the IE DOM manipulation, what you're typically going to do is you're going to have a, a web browser that you, that's up on, on your screen inside of your program, and that is going to load up the web page. After the web page is loaded, you'll write a little bit of code to find wherever the, the login box is or to figure out wherever the link is. And then once you, once you have that link or that login box, you'll put a username and password or you'll, down, or you'll take that and you'll actually essentially click the link programmatically and you'll, you'll download that file or you'll go on to the next page where then you can look and find whatever it is you're looking for. Um, the web request one is... Um, going to be what, what you would use if you just need to download a file where there's no real authentication, you don't have to log in for it, you can just grab the information, and, uh, and you don't have to worry about having to figure out and parse where, th where things are on the actual web browser itself. All right, let's get started. The first thing you need to do uh, in, in this case is you can go to Microsoft.com slash express slash download. Now, I've got on here, I've got the Visual C uh, Sharp 2008 pointed at. Everything I'm doing, you can do it in VB.net. You can do it in a bunch of other, other different languages. I had to pick one for this demonstration, and so this is the one I picked. Um, if, if, if you don't like all the curly brackets, VB.net will do the same thing. 
when I say if, uh, by curly brackets, inside the actual language itself, uh, Visual C Sharp has a, it's very geeky looking. It just is. VB.net is going to be more, more English oriented. Or by, by English oriented, I mean it's, it's, not gonna, it's gonna be more readable. The application that I'm gonna show you how to build, is, this is just a sample. I'm gonna, I tried to pick something that we could do. Yes? You can use PHP and curl and other pro programs out there. But the thing with PHP, PHP typically runs on, on a web server. You absolutely can do all this in PHP with plugins. PHP by itself cannot do it. But if you use P PHP with curl and other plugins that will actually let you use PHP to essentially run, run a Firefox window, you, you can do it there. You, yeah, you absolutely can. Like I said, there's multiple ways to do this. I'm showing you one way to do this. And th this is typically how I do a lot of my automation. So we're, we're gonna, CX Digital is, uh, is uh, I actually, they, they have a booth, a booth here today. Uh, they are, um, just an affiliate network. But the reason I picked them is they have a lot of creatives, images, image ads already built for you. You know, the, the 320 by 200, the 720 by 90, and all those. They, almost every single one of their campaigns has at least one, if not multiple, image ads that you're welcome to use. And that, that's, what, that's what I like about them, because then I don't have to worry about creating an ad for testing. Now, once I find a campaign that works, I'll go and start creating some of my, my own ad copy. But if I just want to do a whole bunch of different campaigns at once and see what works, what doesn't work, I don't want to spend a bunch of time on, on making individual creatives for each one. And uh, so what we'll do is we're going to log into the website, get specific ads, the, the ad sizes that they have available, and we're going to parse those out and download each and every one of those to our computer. And then from there, we're going to build an export where we can take that and dump it straight into AdWords Editor. Uh, I've, I've got the application already built. We're going to go over uh, step by step some of the details that, that you would need to do each individual piece. Then, then I'm going to show you how to do it uh, from scratch and we'll answer any questions that you have along the way. Next slide. Uh, the first thing we, we, we do here, when we log in, I don't know if you can see it here, but um, this section of code, whenever the web browser is load, so you, you tell Internet Explorer to go to www.incidentclick.com to log in. Then it's, wh what you'll do is you'll use things where you'll actually parse through the entire application itself. Or sorry, the, you'll, you'll parse through the, co the code from the web browser and you'll find wherever the username is and the password is and then you'll, you'll, you'll tell it to click on it. You know what, I think I'm gonna skip this stuff and we're gonna get right, right into it because I think if, if I'm just showing this to you, does anyone feel like this is helping you just, just seeing this code by itself? I didn't think so. Let me skip past this stuff. Was there a hand up? Make sure I'm past here, here, here. All right, you know what? Let's just get, get right down to it. Yes, question? Okay. And I'm terribly sorry about this. It's uh, kind of weird going back and forth the way, the way that I'm doing. All right, this program here that you see right here, this is that Visual Studio Express Edition that I told you about, that, that, uh, that I've gone and downloaded. What you'll do is you'll click on file and you'll do a new project. And the name of the project doesn't really matter, but uh, what, what does matter is you want it to be a Windows Forms application. This is something that you'll be able to drop in Internet Explorer onto, buttons onto, and things like that. And we'll just, we'll just call this uh, Affiliate Summit West 2. And once, once this runs, you'll, you'll see something that you're kind of familiar with. You're gonna see um, just a Windows program. It's very empty, it doesn't do anything except when you start it, it's just an empty box, it doesn't do anything. The uh, first step th that we've got that we wanna do is we want to add an Internet Explorer control on here. What, what this'll do, that's the IE DOM parser. And what we'll do 
is it's, um, you'll look for something called web browser. You see that one right there? There's a, a, a bunch of things in there because you, you can use this to build all, all, all sorts of systems and programs, but I'm, I'm, we're just focusing on what you need to automate things. I'm going to click on that and drag it and drop it. And right here, now I have to go over to here. And I need to make it so it doesn't fill up the entire page because whenever you drop it on here, it does that. It's really annoying. You'll see something called doc. Get rid of that. Change that from fill to none. And you can see it has the box that I drew. Now, let's, ma let's make a button because we want to actually do something. So when I click on this button, I want that web browser to do something. As you can see, all I did is I drew a button. I double clicked on it. And that, br that brought me to here saying, when you click on this, I want you to do something. At this point, I'm going to have that navigate to the website, CX Digital. And uh, as you can see here, this text box one is, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put, put that there. I wasn't going to put that in there yet. All right, let's put that there. Click on the button. We're going to run it. What you're going to need, though, is uh, you, you will need something to tell it where the web browser actually is. Web browser equals nothing. And let's, let's run it for now. Sorry. Excuse me while I'm uh, trying to get this ready up and running by looking at it weird. All right, this box right here is what we're going to use for the actual campaign ID. There we go. What this system does now is when it comes up, I will put in a number here for a, a campaign, and it will try and pull up that campaign on CX Digital's website, showing me exactly the image ads that, that they've got. So I'm going to pull up Firefox so we can pull, pick, up, pick a uh, product that we can push. Oh, this is one thing that I did want to show you, and this, this is what, why I had it up. There's something called Firebug. I don't know if any of, any of you have heard of it with Firefox. Uh, it's, um, it's a program that you can use to debug web applications and web website applications. Now, on, on there, you, you, um, once you have it installed, just Google for Firebug, you'll, you'll find it. You can click on that, and you can use something called Inspect, and then you mouse over the, different, the individual fields because I need to find out what that box is called. That's very important to know what, what these boxes are, boxes are called. And so now that I've found it, click on it, and, I, and it highlights it for me. I see it's called input, the ID equals login. So I know that it's called login. The rest of this stuff is, is not, not necessarily important, but you need to know what these IDs are. That's, a, that's what it uses. When you hit submit, it takes the, the names that you had there for the ID, and it sends that to their web server for you. So that's how I already know what those are. OK. But, I've got a sample login from, from CX Digital, so you, you're going to see the, the username and password for this. Don't, don't, don't get all excited and run with it, because it's, it's not. It's I agree. OK. Let's go get some campaigns. This is, one of the, this is one of the joys of doing something live. It's a lot of fun. OK, right here, I can see that uh, these are some new campaigns. And this one has a lot of creatives. See this creatives column? So I'm, I, I know they have a lot. So I'm, I'm going to click on that and pull it up. 55. And actually, you know, there's, those are the creatives. Fine. So, but 
the thing that, that we need here is this 5554, because I've, I've already looked at this URL right here, and I know that that URL is consistent. Every campaign is gonna be the same, except for that number is different for, for each one. So now I've got those, and let's pull up this application that we've got, and I've got 5554. Click on it, and of course, it's gonna try and, and go to the website, but it's, it's, it's gonna bounce me out saying you have to log in first. And uh, you can see, there it is, but nothing actually happened. I'm gonna stop the program, and we're gonna go back to it. And now, I'm gonna double click on this Internet Explorer DOM window, and that will tell me, that will bring up an event, web browser one, document completed. So after the page loads, and it goes through processing, it will, it will fire this event. And so whatever, whatever code you have here is going to run. Then this is where you put your login code. And to make it easy to read, what I usually do is I will have um, a variable where I store essentially what I'm doing. So if I'm getting an image, I'm gonna, pro I'm gonna run this one, which, which has code that's very different from if I'm just grabbing, trying to get the, the URL. In this case, I'm doing the get image, and in this case, I'm gonna be doing the get URL, if we have time for that. But I think we will, because we're going kind of fast. Is this code C? This is C sharp, but it looks like C. But it, yeah. Okay. And to save time, I've already written the code and we're just gonna copy it over here. You know what, here's what we'll do. We'll do this one instead. Okay. In this example here, I. You can see we, we've added s several things into this system already. In here, when you click on it, the document complete event, because we're on the get image, I'm, I'm gonna right click on this and go to the definition for it. I can't read it from here. And from here, what I do is whenever the first request comes in, you look in the document object model for the username and, or the password field. Whatever field it is that you're looking for, you, you'll find that. And so you can do something where you will essentially find all elements where the name is login, because we, we, we found login earlier. And so now let's see if those exist. And, and if they do, if there's only one of them, then we, we know we're on a login page and we're not on the page that we actually want to be at. And then we'll uh, set the username and password to the username, the username and password values that I've set up here at the top. It's affiliate, CX Digital, go crazy, there you go. And uh, from there, we will find the button and essentially tell it that we want to click it. And the way, that there's several ways to find the button, but sometimes, and this is the part that's kind of tricky, sometimes they don't have names or they don't have IDs. If you go back into that Firefox Firebug on the login page and pull this out, if you click on the inspect and go to the button, there's not a name in here anywhere. And sometimes I think they do that to try and trick people, sometimes they don't. Yes, sir? Uh, there's probably uh, 100 or several hundred uh, credit card networks and most people here are using different networks and so they're going, how, is, how can we map over what this particular example onto 100 other networks that are working there? Okay, he, he, he asked, said so there's several hundred networks. How can we take this example that we're showing here and apply that to our own network or another network? And the, what I'm trying to, uh, to, to show you is the processes that, that you would use to actually do that. Like in, in this case, uh, we, we've got a username and a password here. 
Uh, if we pull up another network, you know, if you want, you can just give me one. Um, we can go to Copiac. Okay, well, let's go, let's, let's go to Copiac and do the same thing for Copiac. C-O-P-E-A-C, -E right? There's Copiac. I've got a username and password here. So what I'll do, since I've already got Firebug installed, I'll click it, scroll down a little bit so I can see. I'll click on this inspect button right here, move it over to my, to my user field, and now I know the input name is going to be dl underscore off underscore username. So in, my, in the code, in, in, instead of trying to look for something called login, I would look for something called dl auth underscore username. Yes, sir? Most of these people don't. That's, that, that's what I've found is there's very few, there, there, there's a couple that will have a, a, an API or SOAP that you can use, but a lot of these guys, frankly, are, are behind on that. And you don't want to let the, the lack of an API stop you from being able to, to, uh, to excel. Make sense? Yes, sir. Before we go, we are already half an hour into the lecture and we didn't get yet the username and password. So the question is, can you maybe go an overview and then go into the details? You know what? Yes. I'll, I'll show you exactly what this sample application does, and I'll make this source code available on, on, on my blog so you can go and download it and try it and play, and play around with it. Okay. Yeah, because so let me, yeah. Overview of what you do and go into the Got it, Dan. Yes, thank you, Dan. I promise, I had this worked out before, but I wasn't backwards like this. Okay, this particular application that that uh, we're trying to use to uh, show, because this application shows a little bit of everything. It shows using the Internet Explorer DOM object to type in the username and password, but it also shows just going and grabbing the data from, uh, from a website and downloading it. In this case, let me get ready to run this. I like how it just kind of picks randomly what picture. All right, let's run this one. Does anybody remember the ID that, that we were looking at? The one about uh, 5554, okay. And this will actually work. So let's say I'm gonna type in 5554. And what that'll do is that's gonna go out, you'll see it, it logs in. And after it logs in, it's going to look at the offer page and it's gonna grab every single image off of there, and it's gonna look at it and see if the image is a valid size. Because sometimes they have images in these weird sizes for, for emailers and things like that that they're not, not gonna work on PPC. Then it, after it does that, you, you can see there's a list of all of these image files, and it saved those to my My Documents folder here. All right? And so you, you can see that they're all there. Then it goes to the actual landing page, and it grabs what actually comes up in the user's browser. In this case, it's nopop.marriedbutlonely.com. And I'm going to change this to marriedbutlonely.com. There we go. And then once that's done, I hit um, Google export. And what, what that piece of code does is it takes those images and the landing URL, and it builds um, some data that's suitable to copy and paste directly into Google AdWords Editor. So in this case, I'll do that one. But here's what is kind of neat about this one, is we can actually do multiple affiliate programs at the same time. So if this one doesn't work, we can also do another one. Ah, uh, what does it do? Let's go and grab another campaign as well. Let's grab um, Miracle Blade as seen on TV, 5565. 55. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. What, what that does is it goes, and because it's already logged in, and it can't, it can't find the username and password anymore, so it knows not to, not to run that particular set of code. 
and then it's going to go to the to the exact same landing page. And so now I have five ads for Miracle Blade, and I'm going to change the URL so that it looks pretty because this is what it's going to show in Google after we're done. I've changed it, and I'm going to say Google Export, and it's going to add it adds it to the end. Now this button right here, all that copy does is it takes whatever's in that and copies it to the clipboard. The next step would be to pull up AdWords Editor. This is also not my real account, so don't get excited. All right, and this is something that's really cool about AdWords Editor that I think a lot of people kind of miss on or don't know about. But if you have an import file created correctly, you don't have to go through the steps of making a campaign, making ad groups, or any of that stuff. Just go to, you only need to do, if you're doing a keyword campaign, you only need to do two imports. One import is going to have your ads and, uh, and the ad groups, and the other one is going to have the keywords for those ad and ad groups. And so you, you can do it with the two simple imports and exports. I'm going to do image ads, and I'm going to click on the add update multiple image ads. Now here's, when you first see this, you might think, oh no, this isn't going to work because you have to pick individual files. What you do after you browse for those files is you simply select all the files in the folder that, that you downloaded, and on the next step, you will see where it asks you to give them the landing URL, the target URL, and, and all that information. So there we go, and you can leave this stuff blank. As a matter of fact, I'm going to. And so now, I will go back to this application, copy that, paste it, and you can see I've got the campaign, the ad group, and so on. Next, finish. And here I've got two campaigns that have all the image ads in there. The only reason that they're red is because I haven't set a bid and I haven't set a budget. That's it. Uh, this would be an excellent campaign to test on placement. And if we had time, we could actually go through and take the, the landing URL and push and put that into Google's AdWords um, system where they'll give you suggested keywords based on a URL, grab those keywords, put them in there as well. So you, 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 it's, it's, um, it's not going to be a perfect campaign. If you built it by hand, it would be better. But if you're doing a couple of hundred of these, you can do these really fast and see which ones stick to the wall. And so after you do this, and you do several hundred campaigns in this method, you go, you go back and look at those that worked. And then if, if something never worked at all, just erase it. And so this, this is essentially how I pick campaigns. I run all of them. And those that work, great. Those that don't work, don't work. Now, this, the source code for this application is going to be on my, on my website at uh, johnhasson.com. Uh, are there any questions at this point? And I, I was really concerned about this presentation because it was it's really, really technical. And most of my presentations be before then have not been technical. And so I'm not quite sure if I think a lot of you are going to have questions uh, and are going to feel like this isn't quite what, what I'm looking for. But I'll do my best to, an to answer your questions. Yes? Okay, thank you. Yes? How do you add the keyword? That I didn't do in this application because I didn't, we didn't have time to do that. But, well, there's ways to do it auto, automatically. In this case, if I was going to take this application that, that we've got and extend it so that it would also grab the keywords, Google has an API that, that, that you can use. And there, there's a tool in Google's API where you can give it a URL, at least I think it's in the API, and if it's not in their API, you, you can still scrape it and do it this way, too. S scratch that part out of the video, though, because you shouldn't scrape Google. Just saying. Okay. <laughs> you don't do it. But I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying you should just. OK, anyways. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, yes. Um, for the application that you created, um, do you have to set some type of timeout, like a timeout period, like let's say, uh, you first put in the website, it, does it have to wait for the site to load completely, or does it automatically like, push the submit button and enter your username and password to hit the submit button as soon as the page loads? You know OK, Jonathan, excuse me, sorry. This man in front of me asked a question. He was, um, 
I'll answer your question too in a second. His, his is a little bit shorter. Um, when, it, when the web page loads, he, he was asking if, there's, if there has to be some sort of timer to wait after the web page loads. In the document event, and the on document complete uh, event that, that, that I showed you, that one doesn't fire until the entire web page is loaded. So it, that doesn't fire until the images load and the JavaScript loads and the extra CSS sets loads. That one waits. And so in, in that case, you don't really have a problem of what technically we call it like a, a racing issue where you have to, where one's going too fast than the other. However, uh, I'm on video, so I'm trying to think if I should, if I should give this example. <laughs> um, but I will because Yahoo's since given me an, an API key, so I don't do this anymore. But back then, b before Yahoo gave me an API key, because I, I had to kind of bug them for it quite a bit, uh, their system uses a lot of AJAX. And you'll, you'll see this in a lot of uh, networks, where the page loads, and then the, a and, and then the AJAX fires, and then it starts loading everything else. In that case, you have to put in your, your, your own timers. You can put, put something in there that when the um, web browser event loads, what, what, what you would then do there is you would look for something that after the AJAX loads, it creates it on the page, like a button or an image or something that you know is not there the first time. And so then you'll, you create a, a timer that will check every second, every two seconds, something like that, to see if that particular thing has been added to the page by the AJAX. And then you can run your code to export the campaigns and the keywords and so on. Then that's, I've only had to do that specifically for Yahoo because their site is so heavy in AJAX. With MSN, you can just kind of add a timer because it's, it's, it, it's not really as picky. And um, can you read? Okay, how to get, how to get the keywords. Does, do all of you know about the Google uh, tool where you can actually give it a URL and it'll generate keywords for you? Does anyone not know of that? Okay, I'll pull it up real fast so, so you can see that. Did anybody see my mouse cursor over there? It froze. <laughs> Yay. You know, the funny thing is I actually started running Windows on my Mac because I made my Mac crash too much. I'll pull it back up. But I'll pull that up so I can show you the, the, the URL. But since most of you are, are aware of it, I'll tell, you, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what you would do there is you can either use the API, or if, if, if you can't find the tool in their API using this, these exact same methodologies, you can wait for the web page to load, and you can type in the, and you can have it automatically type in the URL. Now that tool, if you use it too much, will give you a captcha, like you know, enter in this keyword and, and, and it's all weird. Now there are a couple of ways around that, but really on something like that, you can grab that image and then email that to yourself, or. E email that to somebody else and wait for them to, to, to put it back. But in testing, you can just, I can just type it in there as, as I'm going. And then you export that, that list of keywords, and you, you uh, store those keywords and match those up with the, with the image ads. And so now you have a campaign that has a list of 50 to 100 keywords that go along with, with those image ads, and you can upload that to the content network and uh, you can simply do that over and over and over and over again, and you should be good to go there. So that image ads are only for content network. They don't work for search. But for search, you can do the exact same thing. You just have to get your, your you just have to find a place to, to get your ad copy. But we already had a session in here about how bad it is to copy other people's ads. So, but if you want to automate something, that's one thing you can do. There are places out there, there's uh, keywordspy.com is a source, and there's, there's SpyFu, and there, there's places out there that sell you data of people's campaigns and, and their ads. And those are places, if you don't care, and then you, you can actually take those and, and take that, that ad text and run that exactly with your, uh, with your own keyword terms. 
Now, there's one thing you have to be careful about that, especially if you're doing something that's, that, that's uh, like mortgages or insurance or flowers or something like that, is you're gonna end up, if you don't pay attention, you're gonna end up having copyrighted text and words in your ad copy, and you will get a cease and desist letter. I've gotten three. <laughs> So, I actually don't copy ads. I did about a year ago for a while, but I don't copy ads anymore because what I found is that it's, it's, effective, to, to, it's effective to find something that, that works really, but once you figure out that yes, this is a product or this is a campaign I should be using, stop, turn those off because you will get in trouble, you get a, a bad reputation because people will find you. I had some, some guy track me down and said, I don't like you copying my ads. And, I had no idea who he was. I, uh, I, I felt bad because I'm like, I, I don't, you know, I, I felt bad because I don't know who you are or anything like that. But he knew who I was. And uh, it, it turns out that I, had, I hadn't actually copied his ad. I had gotten a large chunk of data and I was pushing, and I was running all of them at once. His ad happened to be one of those. So I wasn't, I wasn't targeting some specific person. And it's, oh, it crashed hard and they took you to the laptop. The other slide that I was gonna show you, and this, this is something that you, you ne really need to be aware of when you're automating these, these uh, systems and, and um, sc scraping websites, you have to be a good netizen. You can't abuse it. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, there's a website called, of what not to do. There's a website called socialmedia.com and they essentially are a, um, and like, they're like AdSense for website, for applications on Facebook, MySpace, Bebo, Hi5, Orkut, and Friendster. And those are all social networks. They will, you can uh, buy PPC ads on there and they have text and, and they have images. As you can see in this demo, since I was doing image ads, what I did is I wrote a program to take the image ads from CX and put them straight into social media and I, Actually, I went a little bit above and beyond what we talked about today. I, I made the entire thing with no front end at all. I, I made it so it was very fast. And so I actually found bugs in their system. Like if you have more than 500 campaigns, their system won't show you anything above that because they're only using the top 500 because who would have more than 500 campaigns? It's crazy. Me. And, uh, <laughs> And so once I, once I figured that out, I, I wrote another script to create multiple accounts. And I, have a, I had a guy actually create, um, he would go and uh, click on the create account button, type in the capture and do that over and over and over. And so I had several accounts and each of those accounts had 500 ads in them. And each of those 500 ads had their own tracking. Uh, for, so I was able to track it if, if it was from Facebook in the US, if it was from MySpace in the UK and so on. And the, the whole plan was when I, I repeat, the whole plan was to uh, look at, at the information that I got from those clicks and from the conversions, and then I would know which ones converted, which ones didn't. I'll give you a hint. Wu Yi T converted in the UK, not in America. I don't know why. Uh, and some of the, um, the crush stuff converted too, but a lot of the other things did not. And then suddenly my traffic died, completely died off. And uh, what... What was funny is I had actually called and talked to, I'm guessing their, their secretary, somebody that was low on, on the totem pole, and told her what I was doing because their system had a problem with whenever I would, I would add money to an account, it wouldn't put it in the right account unless I had completely cleared all my cookies and re-logged in on a different computer. And so I had to call her and have her move money from, from one account to the other, and they did it, no problem. She's like, yeah, sure, no problem. They, don't, they didn't care that I had multiple accounts. But once they, once, uh, I think once they saw the scale of what I was doing, that's when they shut it down. And uh, I, I, I was able to, to get them on the phone. I wasn't trying to hide what I was doing. See, the thing is, don't try and be sneaky and say, I'm gonna hide what I'm doing. If, they, if people ask you, hey, you're, you're doing this and this and this, you say, yeah, why, well, is, is that a problem? You know, and, and if they say yes, then, you, then I, I ask them, then we came up with an arrangement where it would be okay. They said I couldn't do more than 10 to 15 new ads a day. I'm like, oh. Especially since I can do 10, you know, I, I, I could do 10 to 15 ads in a second now. And, uh, and but, but they said if I wanted to keep doing what I was doing, I'd have to promise to spend $5,000 a day. And 
I was this close to saying yes. I, re I, I really was because it was, it was getting to the point where if I could scale this up, it would do really, really well. But I'm actually glad I didn't because uh, since then I've actually I found some things in the traffic that makes me a little bit, uh, you, just, you just want to be careful with, uh, with some of the traffic because it, it'll, say it'll say it's coming from Facebook and it's not always coming from Facebook. And so, but if, if you're aware of that, you can use that to, to your advantage and know that you don't want to bid 20 cents on, 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 on you, you, don't, you want to keep your bids low on, on that particular example. Uh, since this thing is dead, are there any questions? <laughs> yes, sir. Absolutely. Fox Pro, I don't think so. Uh, and it, if, if, you know, if you know how to code in Visual Basic, you can download uh, vb.net from that same website I, I had earlier. You can, they have a, something called a Visual Basic Net Express 2008. Uh, you can do the exact same thing. Matter of fact, you can take my example code and run it through many of the many C Sharp to VB.NET online converters, and it should work almost perfectly. There'll be a little bit of stuff that, stuff that you have to clean up. Yes, sir? Can you automate, or how do you automate the, the backend, or at least looking how uh, the, the uh, commission junction results? How do, you, how do you automate the... the he asked, how do you automate the actual re re results itself? And I would say that, that depends on, on how you're doing it. And the example that I talked about with social media and with this one, there's a, most networks, I think all networks now, have something called sub-ID sub -ID tracking. And so what, what I would do is I would make sure the sub-ID had something along the lines of the, 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 the image size, the image file name that I'd used, as well as the keyword or the placement that came with it. And so then in, in the reports in their system, I would see image at 100 by 200, one underscore myspace.com keyword girls or whatever it was. I would see that and then I would see how many clicks or, or, or conversions I, I got through their own sub-ID tracking. And uh, ClickBank, they have reports that, that, you, that you can export. Now, ClickBank, I'm sorry, not ClickBank, CJ, right? You said CJ. Commission Junction. Com commission, now, commission Junction has an API. If a website has an API, by all means use it. That's what it's there for, and it'll save you a lot of headache and hassle. But if a website does not have an API, there are, there's, that's, there's nothing to stop you from programmatically grabbing the information. One thing I do want to add about the IE DOM method where we, we, we drew the browser on that uh, program and, and use it that way. I was looking at the camera, I'm realizing I'm on camera, so I'm like, that's, they can't detect that. They can't tell that you're automating that at all. Because it looks, the, it, if you have, it looks the exact same as if you just pull up in an explorer and typed it in, it's the exact same. You don't have to worry about the cookie tracking, the session tracking, the refers, or anything. It looks like you're a real person doing it. Uh, if you're using the web, the web client, which we didn't really get a chance to talk to, but that's in the, the, the sample code, that one, um, you have to manage the cookies, you have to manage the refers, and that one, they can tell what you're doing. So uh, just be, that's one of the nice things about doing the, the IE DOM way in, instead of something like curl or these, these, these other programs that run on Linux and so on, it where you you have to add a bunch of um, extra steps to make it look like it, like it's a, it's a real web browser. This place you don't have to. You just run it and and do it and just don't abuse the system. Otherwise, they'll they'll call you and say, "What are you doing?" Yes, sir. <laughs> thank, thank you for pointing. <laughs> the image ads on MSN. You have to promise to spend five thousand uh, dollars. I think it, it, was, it was a month, or is it 10,000 a month? Because I, I called MSN. You, you, you have to be a big spender for image ads. For text ads, you don't have to worry about that. The way that I always upload text ads, because I typically will do a very, very large campaign. Like I've, um, I'll take um, somebody like a, that has a lot of products, and I'll take the, the, the feed of 100 plus thousand products, and I'll dump that in a database, and then you grab things like the, um, the product code, like the, the description of the product, the color of the product, and you uh, mix and match those and create a bunch of different ads that are, you know, the ads aren't gonna be great, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be enough to let, to let people know that this is a Batman costume, 
and that if, and that if, a, if they use this coupon code instead of, nine, instead of $99, it's $79. And then your keyword, of course, would obviously be Batman costume. But you can also do that for televisions and ra ra radios, in any product. Once you have that in a, in a local database, Yahoo and MSN and Google all have predetermined file formats that, that you can use to generate these. Uh, so I, in the case of Yahoo, what I do is I generate a large, very large text file. You know, it can be 100 megs easily. And then I'll zip, zip that up and I'll upload it through their system. If, 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 if you have a Yahoo Gold account, and if you don't have a Yahoo Gold account, a lot of times you can just ask them to, to give it to you because tell them you want it specifically to be able to import campaigns. And once you do that, then, there, then you can, it exports and imports very, very well. I don't use Yahoo's uh, website interface ever, really. I create the ads um, in, in my database and then I up, upload them with, with an import file. MSN's import, the, and I'll, I'll tell you this right now, it's, oh, it's weird. Because the sample file that they give you on the import section is wrong. It does, it, it's, actually, it's literally wrong. You, the way that I was able to back engineer and figure it out is they, in their website, they have a way you can download a campaign. I downloaded a campaign and I, and I looked at that format and, I, and, I revert, and you had to reverse engineer the file format from the downloaded campaign, not from the sample that they gave you. And then I was able to upload it. It was really kind of kooky and crazy. But the cool thing about it, if, you're, uh, if you don't mind the, the, the programming and the coding, you can, you can test a lot of things really, really fast. You can just do some direct linking from the, the, camp, the, f from the ad to the campaign, and, and you'll know really fast which ones are working and which ones aren't working. Just be, you know, be prepared because it is going to cost you some money to, uh, to do the testing. Yes, sir? That software, it's completely free. Uh, you go to Microsoft.com slash express slash download, and uh, you can do it. Look for one called, the version that, that I use is called Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Express Edition, Microsoft Visual Studio C Sharp Express Edition 2008. If you want to do it in VB, Visual Basic, it's, gonna, it's right next to it. And you can download that, that one instead. The reason that I chose this software is because it's completely free. It has a nice user interface, so it's you, you, like with, with, with something like curl or a lot of the open source tools, it's all text, and so you're, you're, you're t typing everything, but with the, the visual version, it makes it a little bit faster and quicker because you're more interested in building the application so you can get your data to import. As, as you remember, the application that we had up there was ugly. The windows were all shaped weird. The buttons were all in weird spaces because it doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm not building it to be pretty. I'm not. That's not something that I'm selling. It's something that I use internally to build the list that I'm going to copy and paste into Google, and then I can import that into Yahoo and MSN. Any questions? Yes, sir. Back. OK, he asked, he essentially asked, what, what's your starting bid price, and how much do you, do you lose before you give up? Right? Yeah. Okay. My starting bid price, uh, in one case, I will ask the, I actually, I call up the merchant that I was working with, in this case it was on all the product feeds, and I asked them what their real conversion rate was, because it'll say 15%, 20%, 8%. I called them, I was like, no, 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 no. I know that, that, that what is it really? Because it, it wasn't accurate and it was a smaller company so they agreed to work with me on it and I was really surprised and so they actually went back in their database had their 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 database guy look it up and they sent me the real numbers what, what they what they really were you know 15.8 12.2 and what I found because you, you always think that the real numbers are going to be lower like so if if on the description of the merchant it said it was 50%, sometimes it would be 12.2%, sometimes it would be 17.8%. It was, it was about 50-50 whether it was higher or lower than what they gave me. And so if you can't get them to actually give you that information, then look at what they've got there. So if they say our average conversion rate is 10% or 20%, 
go a little bit lower than that, and what I would do is I would take the actual price of the product times the commission I would get times their average conversion rate on and on down to figure out the, the maximum that I could pay per click and break even. And then I cut that in half. And so then if everything, if all the math is right, then I'm making 100% profit. And if the math is wrong, then I'm making a, a, a little bit less profit. But once you have real data from your own system, you need to redo those calculations and use your, abs your conversion percentage not their conver conversion number. Uh, there was a question over here. Do I have a little, a, a little bit? Not, not too much. If I, if I get a, a bunch of questions in email, I'll happily write a blog post to uh, to, to answer it. Uh, and the, uh, the it's johnhasson.com, J-O-H-N. Should be up there, but it's blue. H-A-S-S-O, J-O-H-N, H-A-S-S-O-N.com. Is there a question over here? Yes. This might be pretty outdated, but you can use this to track revenue from <coughs> small places at the same time also. Yes, you can. And, and you know, for somebody that's got 10 Google accounts or 10 CJ accounts. Nobody has 10 Google accounts, right? Wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, I know. I mean, you can easily use that to compile it all together and not, you know, <coughs> What he's asking is, can you use this to, uh, to essentially Log into all of your different accounts, because let's say, not, not, that you have, not that you have 10 Google accounts, but let's say you have a Google account, you have an AdSense account, you have a CJ account, you have a, a Pepper Jam account, you have a blah, 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 on and on and on. You can use this to log in and download your, your daily information and stick it in a database. As a matter of fact, I used to do that. I, I, I did, because I have about 20 or 30 that, that I work with. I, actually, I stopped doing that. The reason I stopped is because when you have 20 plus that, you, that you're working with, every time they change something, I had to go back and figure out what it was and change it. So, and it got to be really annoying because I would work and get it just right and then they would change. So I, actually, I hired a guy to, I, I, I pay him hourly to, to do it for me because it, it was, with, it was just less, le less hassle and less work. I did. You know, as, as someone who's all about automating everything, sometimes it's easier just to hire somebody and say, do it. Now, the, now, on some things where I'm building a campaign, I mostly use automation when I'm building campaigns because it's kind of like a, a, a one-time shot where I don't have to have it run perfectly every day. I only have to, have to ha have it work for three days to a week while I'm building the campaign. And after that, I don't care if they change the website because I've already got all, all of my data. And, I'm, and now I'm just waiting for, for the, the results from the PPC traffic. Any more questions? Yes, sir. Uh, how do you track your, uh, all your campaigns? I track all my, since obviously I'm very technical, all my campaigns I track in my own custom system. If you don't want to write your own custom system, this is not a recommendation, but I have heard very good things about Wes's Tracking 202, Prosper 202 system. I've never used it personally, because I don't need to. The, the way that I do is I have a, a specific uh, go-between URL. So it, like it, it'll say www.macysflowers.com on the ad, and that will actually go to my tracking URL, which, uh, which when they click it, that puts something in a record in my database which will have the, uh, you know, the when they came, where they came from, what keyword they clicked on, and, and on and on and on and on. And then that will redirect to, a, uh, to the link for the merchant. And in, there, and, and in that redirect, I'll give them a sub ID. It'll, be, it'll, it'll, it, it'll just be the next number in the list. So if, the, if, if, there, have been a, if there have been a thousand hits, the number would be a thousand. If, if, if that was hit one million and one, the number would be one million and one. So then my merchant, they look at my data, they have no clue what I'm doing. All they see is a, is a, is a bunch of numbers. And I export that and, uh, on the conversions, and I can take those conversions and match those up with my real data, the refer, the time they clicked on, the web browser they were using, all that juicy information, and then figure out things like, well, most of the people that convert are using Internet Explorer. Most of the people that convert are using Firefox. Most of the people that convert are coming from uh, New York or DC or, or whatever it is. Oh. Uh, one other thing that, since I think the only people that are left are, are techie people, is um, uh, there's a pl th uh, there are places where you can go to get IP to uh, to all the way down to I believe the city level 
for free. You don't have to pay a couple of hundred dollars for, for, for these databases. I'm gonna, I wish I could remember the link right now off the top of my head, I don't. It's on my computer, which is, as you can tell, frozen. So uh, I'll put that on my blog in, in the next couple of days so you can go there and find the link. So you, and then you can download that into your own database. And then that way, if you can actually do geo-targeting when people come to a particular web page, you can look at where they're from. And you see this all the time. You know, um, matter of fact, on that, the I, I'm married, but I want to date one, they have geo-targeting on their landing page. It'll say, I'm in so-and-so city, and I'm lonely. And, but yeah, you can do the exact same thing in, in your landing pages. So when they, they come to your landing page, let's say you, you have a mortgage landing page, you can say, well, we have really good mortgages in Tennessee. And then they're more likely to think that you're actually from Tennessee. And it will convert a little bit better. And then you, you can track those down and then know that Tennessee converts better than, say, Florida. And once you know that, you can take that information and go and attack Facebook and target just Tennessee. So you're not wasting money on a national campaign. Any more questions? Nope, thank, thank you very much for putting up with the technical difficulties. Thank you.